let's talk about hydrogen. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about hydrogen. In fact, if we're going to talk about hydrogen, the only thing I can think of to do is, why don't we bring out an expert to talk about hydrogen and maybe the future of it? And uh, so with that, I'm going to introduce Dr. Scott Greenway, president of Greenway Energy and a hydrogen technology expert. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Greenway. Thank you very much. My name is Scott Greenway, and today I am here because I have two passions in life. They are politics and economics, and that is exactly why I got my PhD in chemical engineering working on hydrogen fuel cells, because I guarantee I cannot go throughout this presentation without talking about politics and talking about economics. And let it be known that today, my topic and the message I want to leave with you is patience. Yeah, you think I'm the hydrogen guy, but I want to talk with you about patience, patience and alternative energy, patience with hydrogen. Because honestly, I think it's something that we don't have as a culture today. I want you to think about patience like the Japanese have, who are able to sit there and trim a bonsai tree for years on end to be able to shape it into what they want. And that is because we have become a nation that's really looking for the next big thing. We came up with the internet that grew at an exponential rate. But alternative energy technologies are not the internet. They are something completely different. It's just like the life cycle of an animal. If you look like the life cycle of a mouse, or if you look at the life cycle of an elephant, they work completely differently. And today, I just want to leave you with a message about hydrogen, where it is in its life cycle, and kind of talk about how it's maturing and how it's coming along, how it's going to be affecting our lives in the future. And that's why I've talk, entitled the talk, The Future of Hydrogen, or more accurately, The Present and Future of Hydrogen. Because there was a time where everybody in the United States had the vision for the hydrogen economy. They thought, we're going to have hydrogen fuel cells in every house, in addition to a PC on every desk. You know, we're going to have them in every single car. But they grew frustrated with the fact that that did not come. People had invested money in companies and lost a lot of it. They have a fraction today left of what they invested. And they say, fuel cells, they're not going to work. They're not going to work for another 50 years. Maybe I'll come check back then. My message today is that they are not something that's out there in the future. They're something that's actually working. And we have just not been patient. We have not been there for them and, and kept our support up. We've moved on to other things. We moved on to ethanol. We moved on to biomass. We moved on to solar. But the answer to our energy problems in this world is not going to be a silver bullet. It's going to be the silver buckshot. There's going to be different applications where different technologies are going to be the right thing. And today, what I'm going to tell you about is what we're doing in hydrogen and how it's moving forward and how it's affecting a lot of our communities. Talk about a couple of the applications that are out there right now that a lot of people don't know about. Everybody wants to know when they're going to have their car running on hydrogen. But they don't realize that forklifts today, hydrogen can actually compete with technologies that are currently out there. Uh, people who are running forklifts and plants running on batteries, actually running 24-hour day distribution facilities like Walmart, uh, in, in Aiken, there's Bridgestone Firestone has 46 of these forklifts, and they made the shift based on the economics because it's cheaper than the battery technologies after you have to change them out. I won't get into all the details, and I apologize if I geek out a little bit. It's the engineer coming out in me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try, and, try and keep it kind of basic, but pardon me. You'll notice I have a healthy infection of PowerPoint that came along with my, the three letters that I got to put after my name. So. I apologize about that. I, I understand everybody else has pictures today, and I, I have the PowerPoint. I'm the engineer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these are the hydrogen forklifts. People are actually adopting them. Uh, here in, in Greenville, you, you think, you know, all the hydrogen stuff is going on in Columbia, Aiken, elsewhere in South Carolina, but you guys actually got a bus company that's building hydrogen buses right here in town, coming to town. You have companies here who are building components like capacitors, uh, that are go be going to be going into hydrogen and fuel cell vehicles and alternative energy vehicles. Uh, there are things like uh, one of the sponsors today, Kuster Zima, at one point in time made reformers to go in fuel cell systems. So there's a lot of things happening here. There's a lot of things happening all over the nation that has to do with fuel cells. And if I go anywhere, I can usually name something in the general area that's happening to really make this technology possible. And when I start talking about this, everybody always wants to know why I'm doing this. And I tell people, I do it because I want us to have a better life. 
And I put this picture up here that shows the world at night. It's one of my favorite pictures just because it's really cool and looks nice, but also because it kind of has a message for me. And I sit there and I look at our country with all of its lights, and I look up Europe, and I sit there and I think, wow, we are using a lot of energy compared to the rest of the people. And then I look over at China, and I see, wow, China and India, they have half of the population of the world, and they don't have nearly as many lights as we do. And then I can put up here charts and graphs all day that say in order for them to be able to grow their society and have a better quality of life, they're going to have to use more energy. In fact, to double their economy, they're going to have to use about double the energy. Where is all of that going to come from? How are we going to be able to do it? And my answer is that we have to look at all of the answers for energy. We're going to have to use all of our energy resources more effectively as we start to move forward in the future. And I think hydrogen is one of those keys because you can produce electricity very effectively with hydrogen with very few products such as water, uh, heat, in some cases CO2, making it a lot like the mushroom. Uh, but also you get out electricity. So I think that it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating technology that I've, I've enjoyed working on for, for about 10 years now. And it, the way I see it is, is it's really going to be an enabler that allows us to shift our economy from the fuel sources we have now, like natural gas, to being able to look at things like solar, wind, and nuclear energy sources that are going to be cleaner for the environment, allow us to produce less CO2, and really be, allow us uh, the freedom to, to kind of transition our economy and keep everything growing at the same time. So that's why I advocate this, and, and there are ways that it competes with technologies and that it's actually going to be advantageous in many different cases, and is really going to, to aid in the growth of, of a lot of economies throughout the world and is, is going to, to enable us to, to have the energy we need for a long time to come. A lot of people ask me, what is a fuel cell? And I want to tell you, it's not a scary concept, even though it sounds different and foreign to a lot of people. I usually use the oven analogy. And I'm sure we can come up with others, and you guys might be more creative than I am. But I say most people have an oven. That's what we call a batch process. You stick in you know, a pizza, you stick in a sandwich, and out comes the pizza. But then you go into some place like Quiznos, and you have an oven, and you stick sandwiches in, and cooked sandwiches come out the other end. As long as you continue to feed sandwiches, cooked sandwiches come out the other side. It's the same thing with a fuel cell. The battery is like the oven in your house. As soon as you react all the chemicals, it's done, it's over with, you have to recharge it, you have to get another one. The fuel cell, as long as you continue to put this, the hydrogen in, energy and electricity will continue to come out. So it's not something that you guys have to be scared of when we start talking about fuel cell systems. And I won't get into the chemistry, none of that really matters. What matters is the fact that they're going to be about 90% efficient when you recover the heat that's coming out of them. And I'm gonna show you some futuristic technologies where, where these are going to actually be in homes and they're going to, to be in cars, they're going to be in a lot of different applications that we're going to see. They're not going to be the answer to every problem that we have, but they're going to work in a lot of cases. This is a project that we have right now that we're working on. Uh, that, that's one for me, that's one of the fascinating things. And I love this because the, the company we're doing with really for me gets it. They said, we're going to start with a house and we're going to make it as energy efficient as possible. And I say, yay, that's the right approach. Spend your money first, not on your alternative energy system, even though that would be good for me. Spend it on your insulation. It's cheaper than buying the hydrogen. It's cheaper than buying the fuel cell. And you're going to get more value out of doing it. And so they make the house what's called net zero, where it produces as much energy from solar, uh, from solar hot water heater, from wind, as it's going to be using during the day. And then what you do is you can buy back the energy from the grid at night. But then we partnered with a lot of the electric co-ops and they say, hey, you know the hydrogen fuel cell technology and this net zero energy is really cool and it'd be nice if people adopted that. But I have a problem with people who are out there in rural South Carolina that I have to run copper all the way out to their houses and that's really expensive. And if you think about it on a global sense, you have to go out and make more copper mines you have to do a lot of damage to the environment just to run lines out to these rural houses. It would actually be worth it for me to spend, you know, seventy, eighty thousand dollars on a system where I can store the energy from this house in the house itself, be able to, to be able to power things at night. You know, when you go down, you say, yeah, you can do that with batteries. 
Uh, but the batteries you're going to do this with have a finite cycle life, either that or they're very expensive. And so they say, you know, can we use fuel cells to do this? It also gives you the ability to power your car at the same time. So you could fill your vehicle at the same time that you're fueling your house. And so it's an alternative that's out there, and it's one that's being built actually here in South Carolina to be able to, to do this kind of in a residential application. It actually got us to think about hydrogen communities. Yeah, we can do this for a house, but why don't we, if we're going to build something for fueling your vehicles, why don't we do this on a community scale so I can build a fueling station for everybody, not just for my car and my garage. And so we're looking at how we can build hydrogen communities, how we make all of this more effective, and how we can actually look at solutions that are going to, to take us forward and in the alternative energy market. And also with looking at plants, I think the, the application that we have at Bridgestone Firestone is, is very interesting. Uh, but what if the plant could produce its own hydrogen? What if it could produce steam for the plant as well? And what if we can tap all of this and get 90% of the energy value out of the hydrogen? That's three times as efficient as your normal power plant. So that's really using our, our energy resources wisely because we can use the hydrogen out of the fuel cell system for being able to run their lift trucks. They can power their boilers by the steam and they can use all of their electricity or be able to sell it back to the grid uh, as, as needed uh, to be able to offset the, their energy bills so other people can use it. And it's, so it's getting people to kind of look at this decentralized kind of energy structure as something that we can use as a society to really make us more conscious about energy, to, to make it better for, for the world, and really try and make solutions that are, that are going to be able to allow our energy resources to be here for years to come and for us to share with future generations and make a sustainable future as we move forward. And I just want to, you to remember that this is something of a life cycle. We're not going to have the next generation of fuel cells here tomorrow. Companies like Google, companies like eBay, uh, I've heard it the, enough buzz in the last week about Bloom Energy. It's, it's one of the things is people have come back to me and said, wow, you know, we saw this new fuel cell system on, on, on TV last week, this Bloom Box. You know, have you heard about that? And I'm like, yeah, we, those fuel cells have been here for years. We've never gone away. It's just people have kind of lost the interest. But it's something, it's an animal that matures at a different rate. You have to be patient with the hydrogen technologies. And, and I want to, to, to really just leave you with that message is, is be patient. We're coming up with new things every day. And, and I think that we're going to have a better energy future that's going to be more sustainable and really lead us to new innovations as we move forward. I thank you and, and thanks for your attention and God bless.